You know that I love old stuff and I am always drawn to the things that are big and heavy. You know, 200 drawer cabinets, cast iron urns, steel tables, and old concrete. In fact, I think I'd sell my soul for any vintage concrete yard ornament. From Wisconsin to New England, I have had to convince my husband so many times that we had to bring home those old, big, heavy concrete pieces, including a complete set of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, life-size. Let's start with some thrift store resin pieces. Hey, I'm gonna use DIY paint today. I have white swan, I have beadboard, I have crinoline, and I have tarnished pearl. Four light neutrals because that's kind of my vibe. That's what I do. And we're just gonna dry brush today. That's all. These definitely, even though they try to make them look like original finishes, they really kind of don't. You know what I mean? They definitely look manufactured. So I like this guy. This is probably my favorite one because it's terracotta underneath. It's not fiberglass. You've seen me do this before with some other little finds, but I'm literally taking the tiniest amount of paint, and which is so easy. But look, I'm just hitting the kind of the highlights of it, and it will just freshen it up. It's going to cover the little where it's chipped, right? and I'm dry brushing. Dry brushing is when we take as much paint as we can out of the brush and we lightly brush over so that it hits those top surfaces. Look at the difference, see? how It does show the detail. And then I'm allowing the original finish to be kind of my shadow underneath there. But with the DIY paint, I'm using such a tiny amount because it's so highly pigmented. Together, this is crinoline. I continue to dry brush over the resin piece, just hitting those top surfaces and build up that paint layer by layer until I get the desired effect. were just to paint this, I think that we would run the danger of losing a lot of that detail, right? If I just painted right. a regular coat of paint over it. This way, by dry brushing, I can still have some control over some of those low lights and, and highlights. What's really cool about dry brushing is that it requires so little paint. One time I actually painted a small side table with about one ounce of paint just by dry brushing layers. Last week we found two really huge concrete urns at a yard sale. Unfortunately, they were sold. They sold for $150 for the pair. So I looked around her place a little bit more and lo and behold, I found this really nice fiberglass piece. So um, yeah, it looked a little too fiberglassy for me. So I put that old dry brush technique to work using fusion mineral paint this time.
Now let's add some texture to the paint to enhance that concrete look. Fresco is a powdered agent that you add to your paint to get just, just the kind of texture you want. Now, this is maybe about one to one because I want some thick texture. When you're mixing this powdered Fresco, I want this to almost be like brownie batter. It's in there. The lumps are what give us the texture. So don't mix it and over mix it and get rid of those lumps. Then using an old brush, tap the mixture onto the pot. You don't want to brush it out because that would eliminate all of those lumpy bits of texture. So just pat, pat, pat and tap this uh, fresco mixture onto the pot and then let it dry completely. Once my pot is dry, I'm going to add some additional aging to the pot. This is Debbie's DIY Dark and Decrepit Liquid Patina. I'm using a wet brush and applying it over the surface of the pot. Then wipe any excess glaze off with a damp paper towel. I made a terracotta pot look like concrete. And I also made a metal pot look like concrete. So yes, I will always keep my eyes open for those really awesome old pieces of concrete. But until then, I'm happy to go with faux with a little dry brushing technique, a very small amount of paint, some texture medium, you can create the look of concrete without straining your back or risking your relationships. You can find all of the products that I use today at ellenjgoods.com or at our brick and mortar shop in Medina, New York. I've linked everything that I've used in the description box below. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video, leave us a comment so that you catch all the new projects that we do at L&J Goods.